been so much fun for me than I have been to him because he's always been right there. No matter what I face, no matter what I'm facing right now, I know God can. I know he can, whatever it is. I know he's there just having that comfort to know that some things are bigger than we are, that he is the one that can handle it all. He's the one that breathes the stars. He's a universe. He can breathe in. And to know that he has it all gives me comfort when I can't do things, when I can't be certain places. I know God can. Y'all just worship with me.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Anybody else tonight? Amen. Fix it all. Yes, he's handled it all. Amen. Anybody else tonight before we start? He is worthy of a testimony. Amen. It's your last service, matter of fact, this year. Amen. I'm amazed at our God and what he does, and I'm amazed that he is in control. And sometimes when I think uh, he may be forgot about us or, or uh, 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 let me down or whatever else, I'm amazed that God is always on time. Amen? Amen. Never late. He's always on time, and he's always got something to, for somebody to say that encourage you and help you go just a little bit more. I thank you for the testimonies of what God can do, amen? Even if it's something small like we're losing our wallet, which is a big thing to us, amen? God is still in control, and he is there to bless us. And uh, yeah, he does feed those birds, amen? He said he did. Uh, he said they don't reap or, or anything, but they uh, they don't sow, but they, they reap all the time. God makes sure they get fed, amen? I also reminded that he said not one of them falls to the ground he don't know about, amen? So I'm glad he's in control, and he knows it. Um, he knows when we're going to repent, but we still got to do it, amen. And today, if you're here lost tonight, it's already been said, he's made a way, he's handled it. Hey, hey, and it don't matter how old you are or how young you are, if you understand tonight that you need Jesus Christ in your life, that's him that's speaking to you. And if you need to be saved, it's a good time to be saved, amen. I wouldn't even try to risk the, uh, the new year coming in and me being lost, amen. I wouldn't try to leave this building and not be right with God. So if you need to be right with him, tonight's a good night, amen. amen. I, I, I love for him just to show up and show out, do what he wants to do, amen, whatever you want to say. Uh, he don't have to show out because he's God, amen. He don't have to prove anything. He's already done all that on Calvary's Hill, Brother Hunter, for you and I. And I'm so glad we serve a God like that, amen, who is able to do exceeding, abundant, above what we even think or ask, amen. Matter of fact, that's our theme this year. I hope you maybe memorize that verse. For unto him who is able to do exceeding, abundantly, above what we even think or ask, according to the power which worketh in us, amen. amen. That was our theme for this year. I wonder what God's going to do in 2022. Can I tell you, he's done some great things this year amen. in my life, amen. I've seen him do some great things right here at the church house, amen. amen. Hey, I've seen him do great things in your life. Hey, I've seen him do great, great, great things. And I don't know why we got started on that tonight, except well, I know what the last point he's given us for the night is. Amen. So I want us to go ahead and just get right into the word tonight. It's my last chance to preach for 2022. And Brother Wayne, I don't know if it might be my last chance to preach forever. Uh, so tonight I want to preach like I'm a dying man to a dying people, amen. And I want God to come on the scene and touch us. Hey, it's Wednesday night. We've already made an effort to come out to the house of God. Hey, amen, you could have stayed home. Hey, something could have happened, but you come here. We might as well go ahead and have a little church tonight, amen. Hey, 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 we ought to go ahead and have a little church tonight. You ain't got to sit still. You ain't got to just, hey, look, worship him and feel amen. free in the Lord tonight, amen. amen. 
hey, hey, God's given us a word now. He's given us a word in, in, in Judges chapter 4, a, a ch chapter 8, verse number 4. And I want to read just this one verse. I was going to read a whole lot more, but I think one verse will be sufficient tonight. Mm, I'm feeling good in my soul tonight. If you are, I pray you'll worship him with me. Amen. Hey, we don't know this will be our last service ever. Mm, we don't know that. We just talked about a whole family of six that went out into eternity. Amen. I, I, I believe from the life that they live, they're with God. I don't understand why it happened, but I know God is in control. And I know he's made a way. He's handled it all. Tonight we need to trust in him. In it, in verse number 4, Judges chapter 8, verse number 4, it says, And Gideon came to Jordan and passed over. Woo! <laughs> hey, we all going to come to Jordan before I, hey, hey, when this life is over, you're going to stand right there at Jordan, if you will. If you ain't spiritual enough to understand what that is, uh, you're going to have to leave this world. And you're going to have to go into eternity. Is what that means. Amen. It says, and, and Gideon came to Jordan and passed over. He and the 300 men that were with him. Faint, yet pursuing. Amen. Faint, yes, yet pursuing. And I want to preach tonight with this thought. We get weary sometimes, yet we're still a warrior. Hey, we get weary sometimes, yet we are still a warrior. God, I pray tonight you'll help us. We've, we've gathered here, God, we've already heard praises of how, how, how you've done great and, and miraculous things, God. You give us grace where we needed it, God. You give us mercy where we needed it, God. And you saved us. You made a way for us to be saved if we're lost tonight. And God, you have brought us together tonight on this uh, last service, God, that we planned on this, on this year, oh God. And I pray, Lord, that you'll have have your way in this service and touch our hearts and, and speak to us, oh God. Strengthen us as your people and save the one that's lost. Reclaim that backslider to come back into a good relationship with you, oh God, I pray in Jesus' name. All of God's people said amen and amen. Uh, here in that verse number four, that last line, I know we've, if you're a Bible reader, you've probably heard that preached and taught on many a times. Faint yet pursuing. Amen. And, and I want to say tonight that a lot of people's heard about that, but a lot of people, Brother uh, uh, Norman, I think, uh, they know the story about Gideon. Amen. Anybody not heard about Gideon before? If you've not heard about Gideon, raise your hand. That don't make you dumb if you never heard about Gideon. Everybody's heard about Gideon. Amen. And you know what, what the big deal is about Gideon. Uh, most people when they think of Gideon, they think about his 300 men and the battle he won with 300 men. Amen. And they'll go right there. Brother Norman preaches a preacher. You probably heard me do it. Hey, And we'll talk about how God took 32,000 men and made them 300 men. Hey, so, so Gideon would win the battle and no, it wasn't them that did it. It was God that did it. And that's what, we, that's what we say. That's how we preach that. But we don't realize something, Brother Chris. We don't realize that that wasn't all of the battle. They won that battle. Hey, hey, those men, they come into that camp. Hey, they come into that camp and they, they broke the pitchers and they shined the light and they said, the sword of the Lord and the Gideon. And those men were so nervous, God had their nerves so messed up that they jumped up and they was taking their sword and they was killing one another. And that's where we ended. But that ain't all the story here in this book. That's not all what happens. That's why we read verse number 4 where it says that Gideon came to Jordan and he passed over with his 300 men and they were faint yet pursuing. See, they have, may have won that little battle right there coming in on the Midianites, hey, but, the, but the war was not over. And I want to say tonight, amen, you may say 2022 has been hard on you. It's been a rough year. Hey, there's been some stones we had to get rid of in this year. But I want to tell you something. You might be won a battle or two, but the war is not over. The war is not over, amen. And you may be a little weary, and it's okay. Amen. God says don't be weary and well-doing, amen. Hey, hey, we, that meant they didn't say we wasn't going to get weary. He said just try not to get there. Hey, the battle was won, but the war was still on. Amen. When we think of Gideon, we think of that chapter 7 is what we think of. And we don't ever go into chapter 8. Most people don't. Huh? 
But it says that in verse 22 there in chapter 7, it tells us that every man's sword, huh? Hey, look at verse 22 right there. Keep your Bibles open now tonight because we're going to look in this chapter. But in chapter 22 of verse number 7, it, it, it said that uh, 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 when they broke those pitchers and, and sounded those trumpets, that every man's sword was against his fellow. And I'm going to try to go somewhere, and I promise you I'm going to try to get three points, and we'll go home tonight. But I want to say something. God showed me a lot of things today, brother, brother, brother Jerry. And I'm telling you, you will not win wars when your sword is drawn against your own fellows. Hey, we will not win wars when, when our sword is drawn against our own. One thing I know about Brother Norman Johnson, he is not my enemy. He is not my enemy. He is my brother. And if I draw my sword against him, I will not ever win the battle. I will never win the battle if I pull my sword against my own brother. And that's what happened in verse 22. Hey, that's why they lost that battle there. Hey, but the war was still on. Israelites was uh, uh, fighting. If you read on down in a few verses, uh, 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 the different tribes was fighting. Hey, and they were winning the battle because of God. You can read about it. And then when you get into chapter 8, Ephraim was fighting as well. And, but they come in late in the battle. And when they was, they was fighting and they were winning, hey, they started complaining. Complaining because they got into the battle late and they said, Get in. Why, 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 why? Hey, let me tell you something. When people are getting victory, some people's going to want to complain. That's right. Amen, preacher. Hey, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get us to a new year, is what I'm trying to do tonight. But I'm telling you something. Hey, hey people ain't never going to win a battle when they're pulling their swords against one another, and we ain't never going to win a battle complaining about everything. Hey, this is going to help us tonight if you hang on. Amen. It'll help us tonight. Hey, we're not going to win the battle if we're complaining about everything. And Gideon would tell him, he said, why are you complaining? You've got two victories, God. God. Hey, let's look at that, brother. Verse number three in chapter eight. Because God has given it to you. If you win one of them battles that you've been fighting, it was God to help you win That's it. That's right. Amen. Woo. Oh, Lord, listen to not now. Hey, look, 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 look. You can't win battles pulling a sword out on one another, and you ain't going to win battles sitting back complaining about it. I could, I could really preach a whole lot right there, but I'm trying to go somewhere. God delivered is what it said in verse number three. Huh? And let's look, what we did to do, Brother Hunter, don't ever forget that God's the one that delivered us. Amen? He's the one that's delivered us. He's the one that's delivered us. Verse number four, we get to that verse, though, and it says that Gideon came to Jordan. Huh? He came to Jordan, him and the 300. Whew. I got one more side note, and I'm going to move on. I like to have a church where there was 32,000 that people sold out to God. But I'd rather have 300 that God was using. Huh, I say, I say, I say, y'all know I like adding people. Sister E, I want to add people. I don't like taking names off of the roll. I like putting them on there. But I'd rather have 300 that was sold out for God, that was willing to go. Hey, that even gets weary sometimes, yet they still in the war. Amen. I'll take the 300, amen. I'll take the ones God says you need to have. Hey, it don't matter. Hey, we want bigger, bigger, yes. Hey, I know how we are, but we, we ought to just take what God has given us and say, this will win the battle. Amen. It says that they were faint, yet pursuing. And I looked the word up, and the word faint means to be weary. That's where I got my title from, weary yet a warrior. And it says that they were weary is what it means. It means they were tired. Essentially, that's what it means. They were tired. They've done all that. Gideon been putting out fleeces. They've been waiting. They've been doing all the tests. And God's got, got, got them shrunk down 300. Now all of them's got to go around the, the camp of the Midianites. And they all got to have their, everything's in order. They've been doing, 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 doing. And they just flat out tired is what they are. They're tired, yet, except they're still doing what God told them to do. You know what I see in the world today? Hey, hey, right, hey, look, in churches, I don't want to say in churches, I want to say right here in ours, hey, what I see is people get a little weary and then they stop pursuing. Oh, I can't come. I hurt right here. I better not be there. Oh, Lord, I want to help us tonight. We got 24 spaces, and it's not even filled up. 
because people's weary and they're tired and they don't want to keep on pursuing. Hey, I want to remind us tonight that we may be won some battles, but the war is still on. They were tired. Complain about the preacher when he don't preach right, when the deacon when they don't deep right. Don't trust the trustees. Huh? Brother Danny what, don't know how to conduct the service no matter what he does. Hunter, you just, you know, you mess up on the song. Everybody wants to complain about what everybody else is doing, huh? Because they're tired and they want to complain about what somebody else is doing. Now, I'm trying to help us. I promise that we'll watch and see with the help of the Lord. And it says clearly that they were tired. I'm tired too. It didn't say that the 300 was tired and Gideon was strong. I'm tired. I'm tired of our schools getting shot up. Huh? Hey, I, I, I'm tired of the government trying to rule us. Hey, I'm not trying to be political. I'm trying to tell you that I'm tired, amen. I'm tired as a preacher. I'm tired. I'm tired of crime just running rampant in our street. I'm tired of my phone going off and saying, hey, this man shot this man. This man robbed this woman. I'm tired of these things. Hey, I'm tired of uh, 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 people turning immorality in and saying it's for tolerance. And God says it's an abomination. I'm tired of it. I'm ti- hey, I'm tired of it. As a warrior of God, I'm tired of it. I'm, ti- I'm tired of Russia messing with Ukraine. I'm tired of it. Hey, I'm tired of, the, uh, 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 of this. Of this. Uh, uh, I'm tired of the church being worldly. And the world wanting to be churchy. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of our families busting up, hey, and divorce is just easy to do. Is Hey, I can get divorced as easy as I got married. Right. Tired of it. I'm tired of our children going astray because mom and daddy, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. Yet I see no place to get off. I see no place to stop. I see no place to sit down. We might be weary, but the war is still on. Tired of our churches not having pastors because our men won't step up to the call. I'm tired of our women having to teach our men because our men's too sorry to do it themselves. I'm tired of it. And I know you get tired too. We may be a little bit weary, but we're still warriors for God. There ain't no place to stop, church. Tonight, I want to tell us, there ain't no place to stop on this thing. I'm tired of people living in sorrow. I'm tired of sickness running rampant. I'm tired of sin in our lives. I'm tired of our friends not, hey, look, our friends not being friends, our family being like foes. Maybe you're tired of people on the job. Maybe you're tired of church. Bless you, Lord. Stay on. Oh, help me out. Yeah. And you got a little weary. But you're still a warrior tonight. You're still a warrior. And I want to say something. Gideon, he, he had his glorious victory there with his 300 men. But that wasn't all the battle. He had to continue. That ain't all of it. Next time you hear a preacher stop there and say, but that ain't all. Them boys was tired. They was weary. They was faint. Yet they were pursuing. Huh, isn't that what the Bible tells? Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Amen. They shall run and not be weary. Amen. Shall walk and not faint. Still a war, church. And you may be weary. You may be tired. 
Brother Danny, don't look at Brother Norman and say, I'm tired of you there. <laughs> We're in this thing together. That's right. Amen. We are. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, the wickedness and powers in hey, high places. Not down here on a little old us. Satan's our enemy, not us. They were weary, yet they were still warriors. Hey, and I want to say, this is my message. Y'all go ahead and get my message. I don't know what God's going to do. You may be saying, you know what? I've been thinking about a clean start for 2023. Good. And the wife's going to try to lose some weight. Figure first year is a good time to start it. That's kind of what everybody does. We don't believe in New Year's resolutions now. We don't believe in that. But it's a good time as any to start if you're going to do something. I mean, today's a good day to start too. But if you're going to start with a fresh start, if, you're going, if you want things to be better next year, I know we've been through a lot this year. And I don't make light of no one's troubles and, and battles. But if we're going to take a fresh start, we're going to have to look right here, just a few verses and we'll go home. We're going to have to look what it's going to take to get a fresh start, a clean start. I know maybe there's some watching tonight. If you want a clean start, here's what you're going to have to do. Here's what you're going to have to do. Look into the Word of God now. Look at verse number 5. You got your Bible still open tonight? Hey, I mean, let's hold our Bibles up tonight and let God, hey, let God know we still got His Word here in the house of God. Amen. Hey, everywhere in church, you see, they always broke out the Word of God. Let the devil also know that we're going to use the Word just like Jesus used the Word. Hey, and we're going we're gonna to read this. I'm not going to make up a point tonight. I'm not going to say something that sounds good. I'm not going to tickle on the symbol. Hey, I'm not going to itch ears tonight. I'm just going to use the Thus saith the word of God, and simply here's what it says in verse number five. He said unto the men of Succoth, Give us, uh, give, I pray you, loaves of bread unto the people that follow me, for they be faint, and I am pursuing after Zeba and Zalmuna. Huh? That's what he said, amen. If that ain't spoke to you yet, let me clarify what God was saying, amen. He was saying, I'm after this Zeba guy, and I'm after Zamuna. Who was those? Uh, it was the Midianite leaders, amen. That was the ones who got away and who ran. Hey, the battle was won right there in the camp, but they was the leaders that was running away. And I want to tell us tonight, if we're going to start with a fresh start, we got to get rid of disease. Preacher, don't make sense. Everything's got an A, everything's got a Z. I am the Alpha and Omega is what he said. That's the A and the Z if you don't know. And we're going to have to get rid of the Z's. There's some things you've started in life that ain't really worked out for you. It ain't to your best advantage. Hey, there's relationships you started. Hey, you remember number A, a letter A was good, amen. It started off all right. But now, hey, that thing has took you and destroyed you and made the wreck. Hey, things in our life just tore us up. And what we need to do if we're going to make a fresh start, we need, to, hey, look, we need to finish them Z's off, amen. We need to take those bad relationships, take those things in our life that's tried to destroy us and get rid of all of it. I'm talking about finish disease. That's point number one, finish disease off, amen. You can't leave disease on there. You got to finish what you started, amen. You got to dot all your I's and cross all your T's is what I'm trying to say. Hey, you got to tie up all the loose ends that you got going on. Deal with all your problems. Handle that business, if you will. Close the door. Amen. Of things in your life that ain't working. That if you leave, will destroy you later. I'm in the Bible. Finish them Z's off. Zamunas is running you down. Zeba's after you. Trying to destroy you. Why? Because you thought you're done with that, but it's still there. It's still hanging on. And you don't, if you don't finish up them Z's, you won't never get rid of it. You'll never be able to have a fresh start. It'll always be there to haunt you. Get rid of the Z's. Amen. Next week is 2023. And if you want a new me, hey, finish off the Z's. 
I know it's different, preaching. I know it's different. This is what God told me to say tonight. You got to get rid of disease. Amen. Hey, you'll never get a fresh start unless you finish disease. You might have won that battle, but disease is out there. A was good, B was good, C was good. LMNOP wasn't too bad. But Z is still hanging over your head on that situation, and you need to get rid of it. Z is killing you. Huh? You don't need to get some Z's and go to sleep. You need to stay in the battle and fight and say, I'm going to go and I'm going to run them down and I'm going to get rid of these Z's. I'm going to get rid of Zeba and Zamuna both. Because see, they ain't, most of the time it's not just one issue in your life, Brother Norman. It's several Z's that you got to get rid of. Finish the Z, point number one. Look at verse number five again. Look at what it says. He says, and he said unto the men of Succoth. That's a city. He went to Succoth. He said, he said unto the men there at Succoth. Hey, you, 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 and it says later on, uh, the men of Succoth would not give him any help. All he asked for was some food for him and his men because they were weary. They were tired. And it says, I'm not going to give you help. You know what? I'm, hey, oh, ooh, let, me, let me go on. Hey, look what it says. Go on down to verse number 8. And he went up thence to Peniel. Hey, and, and he asked them for help. And within short, I'm trying to move on. Hey, they wouldn't give him no help either. Brother Jerry, he's in a war. He's wore out, and he's, he's asking for a little bit of help, and they won't give it to him. Who is he asking help from? Well, we got to look. You got to know your Bible. You got to see a, a, a Sukkoth was a city that, that the tribe of Gad lived in. Hey, they lived in the city, and they didn't even fight for the city, and they got that city. That's where they lived. The tribe of Gab was there. Hey, and Peniel, if you know your Bible, you know that's where Jacob wrestled the angel at. Amen. Hey, look, look, those are places where God's people lived. You, you caught up with me yet? See, he was asking help from God's people, and they wouldn't give it. Say, preacher, why are you so weary? How many pages you want me to show you? Preacher, you can't, you can't. I am a little discouraged. It's only 24 blanks. Sister Diane, how many names is in the church again? You asked for help from your own family, and they would not give him help. They refused him a little bit of bread. They refused him a little bit of help. Church, listen to what God's saying tonight. Hey, this is, this is the Israelites. This is his own people, and they would not help him. But let me tell you what he did now. Hey, let me tell you what he did. He was, he was, he was weary, but he was still a warrior. He was asking help from his own people, and they wouldn't get it, and he did not give up. You know, we're living in a world today where we got hashtags and stuff. People think they're great because of how many friends they got, how many likes they had on the post. They wouldn't know how to handle rejection if it come to them for nothing. I tell you what, the very first thing I tried to do for God, and I knew I couldn't do it, don't know why he asked me to do it, fought God all the way, and the first thing I did is my own people come up and... I could call, I call names, I wouldn't, but... But I wasn't in it for them. I might have been weary, and I might have been hungry, and they wouldn't give me no food, but I was still in a war, amen, and God called me to be a warrior, not a little sissy, hey, won't, hey, look, can't take rejection for anything, I, I tell you what, you know what, these people sitting here right now, these people told me my family ain't coming back because somebody hurt their feelings, and Brother Norman, you don't know how bad I want to look at them and say, my God in heaven, did you hear what you just said? Amen. Amen. I quit serving God because somebody hurt my feelings. I, I, I said we get weary. 
But ain't we warriors? Aren't we warriors for God? Gideon went on. Hey, he didn't, they didn't get food from him, but he went on. What I'm trying to say is, hey, hey, look, he asked for help, but he didn't get it. And I want to say tonight, we're going to do it. We're going to be warriors. We're going to need to finish off them Z's. And we're going to need, we're going to, need to know our need. People think they need a 32,000. I'm, tr I'm trying to be real nice here. But God said you don't need the 300 to get him. To do an impact, to, to fight thousands of men. Thousands and thousands of men. See what we need to do is know our need. Brother Wayne, I love you. And I'll be the first one to stand up and I'll get on my knee and say, I need you, brother. I love you and I want you here. And don't you ever think anything different. And I'll go around through this whole church and tell you I love you and I need you right here. But I'm telling you what, if you decide to leave, if you decide to go somewhere else, if you want to do something else, if you don't want to give me no food, I want to tell you I want to stand up and say, I want to be a warrior. Because I know my need. And my need is God. God was trying to tell Gideon, you don't need all that. You need me. I'm the one that's going to win the battle for you. I'm the one that's going to bring you on over here. I'm the one that handled it all. And as long as you got me, you got it all. I don't sing songs and, and think they're the greatest about all. I, as long as I got King Jesus, I feel like I need you to. But not, not to win the war. Not to go to heaven. And I know my need. And it's Jesus Christ. That's my need. It's God is my need. Hey, look, you, you think I'm out of the Anybody think I'm out of the Bible tonight? See, Gideon asked for help, Brother Norman, from his own brothers that refused him. But he had to go back in his mind. And he had to go back to chapter 7, if you will. And had to go back when God says, I want you to get rid of some of them people that you think you need. Get rid of disease and get rid of the people you think you need. As long as we got King Jesus, we got all we need. When you're down to nothing but him, you got all you need. He learned that lesson. Hey, he learned that lesson, huh? He learned his lesson right there in chapter 7. Anybody with me tonight? This is a good looking congregation. I wish everybody was here. Amen. Thank you for being here tonight. I've been sad just to preach this to you, Brother Norman. Hey, I would love to but I would have. I would. Hey, I'd switch it up. Yeah, man. I love it. Good preaching. See, if we're going to have a great year this year, Brother Jerry, I can't tell you your Z's, but you know your Z's. Brother Leon, you're a good man. I love you. I love both of y'all. But you, need, you know your Z's. Sister E, talking about her last night with me. But you know your Z's. And you need to know your needs. That's N-E-D-Z. Know your needs. And it's God. How are we going to do it? God. It ain't going to be because we got great talent. I like to talk about the talent we have. I, I like the spirituality of some people in the church. I talk about your spirituality all the time. huh? But it ain't going to take that. It's going to take God if we're going to get through this thing. Amen. If we're going to win this battle. It's going to take God. We need to know our needs. And our needs is Jesus Christ. And to finish it off, look back in verse number 4. And it said, And Gideon came to Jordan. He gets to Jordan. It's a river. Then he goes to a place called, he goes to another place called Sukloth. It's a city. And he goes to another place, Peniel. It's, an, it's another place. Y 
Y'all remember what Jordan was? Jordan, the river. You, you know where we're at in the Bible, right? You know the timeline in the Bible. The Jordan's where miracles happen. See, 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 God told Joshua, he said, I'm going to be with you like I was with Moses. And he said, whatever I did for Moses, I'm going to do for you. And Moses was trying to lead people, and he faced a Red Sea, and God parted it. Huh? Huh? Hey, and Joshua was trying to lead people, and he faced the Jordan River. Hey, but we read in the Word that God said he was going to do for him, and he parted it. Hey, you know what that is? That's a miracle work in God, amen? It's a miracle work in God. Remember, he came to the Jordan, and always remember, God is a miracle work in God. He came to a place called Suckloth. Huh? Uh, it's where Gad lived, remember? And they didn't fight for it. They just, they just received it as an inheritance, huh? Hey, hey, that was a picture of grace, by the way. Hey, they received something they did not deserve. And then he came to Peniel. Huh? That's where Jacob would wrestle with God. And we know that my man ain't going to wrestle God. There's not one move you're going to pull on God, and it worked. So we see, Brother Jer, hey, we see, Brother Chris, that when he wrestled God, God was just showing mercy the whole time. See, when you think of penny all, you can think of mercy. So what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say, hey, if we're going to move forward in the new year with a new us, hey, and continue to fight this battle, we're going to have to finish those Z's. We're going to have to know our needs. And we're going to have to remember God's deeds. Amen. Uh, that's D-E-E-D-Z. Amen. Hey, we got to remember his deeds. Hey, I'm going to tell you something. I'm remembering what he's already done for me. I don't know about you, Brother Jerry, but you remember what he's done today. Amen. You remember the birds got fed. Amen. Hey, you remember when he saved you in the bathtub. Hey, you remember what he done. Remember his deeds, amen, when you're facing something hard and you're facing something true. Hey, just say, I know God. I don't know how we're going to face it, but you're a miracle worker. I remember Jordan. God, I know when you ought to uh, kill me, you give me mercy. Uh, God, when I didn't deserve it, you gave me grace. I remember your deeds, God, and what you did for Moses, what you did for Joshua, what you did for J Gideon, you'll do for me. That's what he is. You remember when he made the way, Brother Wayne? Huh? Where there was no way. You remember when he opened up doors that were shut to you? Hey, you remember when he healed you? Huh? Remember when he answered your prayers? Hey, remember when he moved mountains for you? Hey, remember when he, when he held you together, when you felt like you was falling apart? Remember those things, eh? Hey, remember when you won the victory? It was him. It was him. God gave you victory. Thank you, Lord. That's it. That's it tonight. Remember his deeds. Remember his deeds, huh? What you got to do? Go back to chapter 8 this year if you need to. Go back to chapter 8. Amen. Amen. Look at your diary on the miracles God did. Amen. Open that thing back up and start reading it on what God's done in your life. Hey, open up the file on God's grace in your life if you have to. Hey, hey, pull, pull back that thing off the shelf, that log book of the mercies God has showed you through the years. Amen. Hey, what I'm trying to say is remember the deeds God's already done. Hey, he's able to do it again. Hey, we're weary, but we're still warriors. Huh? Hey, we're weary, but we're still warriors. I don't know who wants to sing, who's going to sing, and what they're going to sing, but you need to be making your way on up right now. Hey, we need to stand all over the house of the Lord. And look, tonight is the last night scheduled in this year, and you be obedient to God. You be obedient to God. I don't know what he's saying, what he said, hey, or whatever else. Maybe you, maybe you already offended at some things I said tonight. Amen. But the Word of God said clearly, they was faint, yet they were pursuing. How about it tonight? Hey, you ain't got to wait for him to start playing music tonight. If you need to come and talk to the Lord.
Huh? You need to come and talk to him. Say, Lord, I've been weary. I'm a little weak, Lord. I'm a little faint. I'm a little tired. God, I need you. You're all I need tonight. God, I got some Z's in my life I got to get rid of. I got some Z's in my life. God, preacher, don't know what they are. But God, you know my Z's tonight. You know where I'm at tonight, God. God, you're all I need too, God. I'm thankful for my church. I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful for my friends. But God, you're all I need. God, I remember what you've done for me. When I faced Jordan, you parted it, God. How about it tonight? Are you going to go into the new year? Holding on to things you need to let go. You want to be a new you, but you're going to hold on to some old stuff. Huh? How about it tonight, church? You may be weary tonight, but we're still warriors. That's right. It's what I do tonight. I'm going to play tonight myself, but I'm, I'm inviting anyone who says, I want this year to be a greater by far. Are we at the place in our lives that, that we're so comfortable and we're so, we're so settled on our leaves that we don't need to pray? Uh, we don't think we need God. We've won battles right here, but the war is still on. As we pray tonight all over the house of the Lord. 